Anyone who knows me knows I definitely have a soft spot for science, especially love space exploration. So when I got a chance to talk to astrophysicist and podcast host Neil deGrasse Tyson, I could barely contain my excitement. His new book, To Infinity and Beyond, co-authored with Lindsay Nix Walker, is truly a cosmic discovery. I love this book. It is, it's fun. And I don't mean to sound surprised at that. It's just, it's, you make cosmic discovery so approachable. Is that, that was the goal, right? That was the entire goal. Thank you. We're done with the interview. You got the <laughs> <Goodbye>. point. <across. laughs> yeah. I mean, the fun part is, I, th I think what makes it fun is because the book has the DNA mm -hmm. of my podcast, which is called Star Talk. And it was found, it was began with a grant from the National Science Foundation, where we wanted to find a way to bring science to the public that might not know that they like science, right. or better yet, to the public that knows they don't like science. We say, how would we do that? So we found that the recipe, if you want to call it that, is science mixed with threaded with pop culture and humor. And what we found is that if you smile when you learn something, you come back for more. And if we attach the science to some pop culture knowledge you already have, then the science, the value and meaning of the science is magnified. And what's the definition of pop culture? It's a shared mm. awareness of our world. And Hollywood blockbuster movies are a great force in that shared awareness. So at, in this book, which which chronicles the ascent from Earth into our air, into space, to the moon, Mars, and beyond, to the outer reaches of the universe, that ascent of mind, body, and spirit, and technology. Um, there's, there's scenery, which are movies that are, have attempted to do the same things we're describing. Mm -hmm. And so I talk about it. I said, did they get it right? And you know I'm up in their face if they got it wrong. <laughs> I love that. Kudos to, to you and to the NSF uh, for creating Star Trek to, to build this idea and this framework that really makes nerds, science nerds out of all of us. And I think it's so key. And you really challenge readers to set aside everything they know about the cosmos. What are some facts that you think will amaze us? I think everyone has a soft geek underbelly mm -hmm. that they might not yet have discovered. <laughs> so so it, 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 if it, it discovers that within you. And I think we've, we've all always had it. So things that you might not have known about were, I mean, how long it took us to figure out how to ascend in the air. Mm. The fact that hot air rises, all right, what does that even mean? Can I trap it in a balloon? Yeah, yeah we did eventually, but way later, then you would have ever imagined that we would have done this, okay? It's only like centuries ago, not mm -hmm. millennia ago. And then you trap it in a vessel, and then you put a gondola on it, and the first aeronauts was a sheep, a duck, and a chicken. <laughs> they, they put themselves up. It's like, all right, we're testing some farm animals here because I, I, I'm probably going to eat them later. You point out that there's so much yet to be discovered. Um, what are some new truths that we are now finding out about our planet. So right now, we don't know what dark matter is. That's 85% of the gravity of the universe has no known origin. I know. We can measure it. We don't know what's causing it. Dark energy. Oh, here's what we want to freak out. Dark energy, we call it. We don't know what that is either, but it's a mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space that's making the expanding universe accelerate. And if you run the math on that, in 22 billion years, that accelerated expansion will so outstrip gravity, which is holding things together, that it will rip the fabric of space and time, leaving us to wonder what would possibly be there if the very pixels that make up the fabric of the universe are ripped at that level, which in 22 billion years will happen if there's nothing there to stop it. To me, that's the most terrifying future I can. In fact, I made note of it on my on my smartphone calendar. When it comes to humanity and space exploration, where do you think we're going in the not too distant future? I, I, I there are so many great books out there that that kind of 
you know, philosophize about where we might be, say, if we were going to go to Mars or colonize the moon, where do you think yeah, that we're headed? I, I, have a, I have a very broad view of this. I think now that more countries are participating in space, you know, uh, India yep. landed a probe on the south pole of the moon. Japan is there. So the more that happens, the more the solar system becomes our backyard. Mm -hmm. If the solar system is our backyard, then let's do it all. Yeah. Go mine the asteroid for its rare Earth elements, but they're common on an asteroid. OK, uh, 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 go lasso a comet which is chock full of fresh water, which we might be running out of soon on Earth. And, wow. and by the way, while you're mining the asteroid, there's another one headed our way. Could you just nudge that out of the way while you're up there? Sure, we can do that. Genius. Let's look for life on Mars. Let's have uh, let's have uh, amusement parks on the moon. And there's a, there's a bad joke there, which was a good joke, good, bad joke. It's if you have if you have amusement parks on the moon, there'd be restaurants there too. And but moon food would be really weird. Uh, but even if they made it good, what's certain is that restaurants on the moon would have no atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Did I done? Boom. They'll be here all afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so so if the solar system becomes our backyard, then this you don't have to prioritize it. You just yeah. have a, a warehouse with all manner of boosters and rockets, and you go pick what you need mm -hmm. to accomplish your task. And then we extend Earth's presence into the solar system. Only good can come of that, because you know why? You can't create borders in space. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Not only that, if you're flying through the vacuum of space, you can't fly a flag, or rather, if you tried, yes. it wouldn't furl in the breeze because there's no breeze. Mm -hmm. So maybe space is not a place for countries and flags. Maybe it's a space just for humans.